After a fire this fall, we've been a little bit out in the cold for some of our projects until spring arrives and we can finally rebuild. In the wake of needing to rebuild, I'm also looking to do a series on exploring historical building methods and decided to seize this opportunity to try this with a snow structure and see how they stack up and see if I can make a workshop that can be very fireproof that I can use in the meantime. 18 degrees outside, we call it a night and see how well this goes. So it's January now in Minnesota and it is pretty much dead of winter. It is very cold. A little limited on what projects we can do right now with the workshop. But of commission, I want to take advantage of the current environment to build a temporary workshop out of snow and ice. Something a little bit less flat. We have a shipping container. I was able to move a lot of the stuff from the workshop into for at least temporary storage. It's okay, it's not insulated and it's very packed in there. So I want to try to build a little bit of a workspace that's protected from the elements. And I also want to build a little bit of a sleeping quarter on the side. It should be interesting to see how much insulation the snow itself can provide and see how well we can build a usable workshop and take advantage of the environment we're in. The first step for building is waiting for the perfect weather when the snow is just warm and wet enough that it'll easily stick together. Then using a block mold I put together, I was able to pretty easily start forming the pieces of the wall block by block. Still the build about half of this one day when it was just above freezing, 34 degrees I think Fahrenheit. Stuck together really nice. Got really quick results. So it's really smooth. Then as the day went on, it actually got a little bit colder and then couldn't get to stick as well. Well the blocks started to crumble and it got really frustrating. So then I tried it adding in my own water and that that just made it work. Not get a good result. I had to wait until the perfect timing, able to actually get another narrow window of being able to do it. It's actually weirdly, because the weather in Minnesota is weird, is actually had to wait until after dark. It just warm enough to be sticky, build again with ease. So then I ended up working like 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. I finally got exhausted. For the roof, I spanned the gap with some timber and covered it with some bamboo. To insulate it, I'll just need to let some snow accumulate on top of it in the next coming days. It's been a few days now of building and playing with snow and got pretty solid walls. It's higher than I can reach. It's probably about eight or nine feet then. Just tall enough to fit the doors of the shipping container, which is why it needed to be so tall. Kind of regretted that. It needed a lot more work. Top blocks were pretty hard. Right now, next, I want to try and build the side structure. Unfortunately today it is still too cold. Not perfect. Snow is not sticky at all. Has frozen a few times. It's kind of solid. So I'm going to uh, try and do this more of a traditional way of just cutting out the blocks. Generally they did that in the tundra on the wind blown snow where it's really hard. They can just walk right on top of it. Snow here is kind of layered. So I'm going to try and cut it and see how well I can stack that up and hopefully get at least part of the foundation for the igloo. So let's give it a shot and see, see if I can do that. Of course, right when I was getting to the height I was planning to stop at and let it freeze overnight, disaster struck. Unfortunately, this method of cutting and stacking snow was just not solid enough to work out. So I'll need to go back to the original plan and wait for things to warm up enough so I can just use the mold. In the meantime, let's get some ice. Oh, 
I imagine the ice is probably about two feet thick, a foot, maybe a foot and a half in right now. So at any point, it might break through. And uh, this is a matter of being able to catch the rod before it goes through, I'm losing it. Oh, there we go, we are through. There's water. A little over a foot. Alright, this should be big enough to get the saw in there. I'm gonna start the saw. Hopefully I don't drop it. Alright, so saw isn't working too great. Not the perfect saw for the situation if the, the teeth go right up to it and there's not a long handle. If I had a longer handle, it'd be a lot better. You really just need some long draws. This is for cutting wood, so it's pretty small teeth. For ice, it's not as hard, so you really just need large teeth that take up big chunks. <sighs> it's actually a bit thicker than I first thought. Basically, almost the full length of the blade, which uh, probably the biggest issue is that I, I can't get a full cut on the bottom of it. Got a decent cut on the top, but the bottom is just uh, too thick. And I'm only maybe getting a couple teeth on it, so it's uh, it's only moved a couple inches. So I think. I think the saw is just not gonna cut it, literally. <laughs> so we need to get something a little bit longer to, uh, to take care of this. So let's, uh, let's go make one. But first, thank you to today's sponsor of Acorns. Acorns is an app that helps you save and invest for the future. Acorns will automatically invest spare change from your everyday purchases, from holiday gifts to gas to groceries and more. So when you buy a cup of coffee for $1.50, that extra 50 cents gets rounded up and gets sent directly to your Acorns investment account. Acorns allows you to have recurring investments so you don't have to think about it. No expertise required. Acorns diversified portfolios are designed by experts to help you maximize growth potential and weather markets ups and downs. And you get a pretty sweet heavy duty metal debit card. You can also earn bonus investments from 350 plus brands as you shop or even find a job right in the app. And if you have kids in your life, invest for them too with Acorns Early. Get started in just five minutes and unlock investing, retirement savings, checking, earnings, and more. Sign up today and get a $10 bonus investment when you use my link. So back on the ice with attempt number two. This time I made another saw. Made it really quick with uh, some modern tools just because we're a little short on time and uh, filing the actual teeth into it. It takes a long time to do it the old fashioned way. So this one has a few improvements. Mostly it's a lot longer and the teeth go all the way to the edge. which should allow some much longer strokes and get that bottom piece. So it's really hard to get with the sawmill saw. And I also put a, a handle on it which should make it a little bit easier to actually pull and push really long strokes. Also as they edge, they're less likely to drop it in the ice. So I think even if I did drop this, I'd probably float. Maybe. Hopefully we won't find out. Still really slow. It's not looking better. Still, still, still a lot of ice. Alright, got one side done. Just got three more. Already exhausted. This is going very slow still. First time I used a chainsaw. The very first time. That was nice and easy when you use a chainsaw. Oh, we got three sides done, and now last one. Hopefully, we get a solid piece out of this. This is a lot more work than I expected. <sighs> Almost through. It's the last little bit. The bendy nature of the saw, which really caused the edges to be a little bit tapered. So I tried to push it out. It uh, just kind of jammed in there. It's trying to widen the hole a little bit. Hopefully, we can get it out. Almost seems to be refreezing now though. Hopefully we can push it down and it'll bounce up enough and can grab it. Or it'll just get stuck and we'll lose it. Yeah. Quite the right tongs for this job. There we go. <laughs> uh oh, just lost the rod. <laughs> uh -oh. Alright, we'll have to skip down for that next time. So it took a good three hours to cut out. Sadly, now that we have a hole, we could cut a lot more, probably a fraction of the time, but uh, I'm exhausted. And I don't think I have it in me to cut anymore. I really wish there was an easier way to get ice. 
It's a block we cut from the lake, very, very labor intensive. It is at least somewhat translucent. I'm gonna try and put it in here into the wall as a bit of a window. Uh, I got a bit of a crack here from between some of the blocks, use that stirring point and cut roughly the same size of it and put it in there. And hopefully the whole thing doesn't collapse in the process. Hello there. Yeah. Finally, after waiting for a warm day, I can get back to finishing up the igloo by using my mold to form some blocks. Filling everything free solid over a few cold nights, just need to place a few blocks that I pre-made onto the roof. Then once it all solidifies and freezes, I can take out the supports. I think there's one more layer to go. That freeze up and should be solid. So yesterday had some unseasonably warm weather, which worked really well for making the igloo. But unfortunately, the warm weather caused the wall on the other side to uh, lose some integrity and collapse. This is the southern side, which gets the most sun. So we have a, a blizzard coming in tonight. I'm gonna try and reinforce the roof so we can get a layer of snow on the top, because I have not been wanting to manually put snow that high up. And then all the new snow we fall, hopefully rebuild the wall. Let's get that fixed up. All right, so we got the uh, snow fort all built. Now to put to the test with some fire. So I have the knot of flamethrower from the Boring Company. See just how not flammable it is and see if uh, any future uh, issues will be prevented by it. Resistant. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're pretty good. Mostly charred. But there's one more test I want to do. <laughs> test the insulation factor and see how well I can sleep during a really cold night. So let's try it out and see if I survive. So we have this uh, all close up, supports are removed. We officially have a bit of a snow forward igloo here. So I want to try it out and sleep in it and see how warm I can stay. Let's uh, spend the night and see how it turns out. So it's uh, a little bit after midnight. It is gonna be one of the coldest nights that it's been for a while. Getting down to at least 20 degrees below freezing. So it should be a decent test of the insulating factor of snow. Got my bed all made here. I'm pretty confident it will keep me warm for the night, but we'll see. 
going to uh, get settled then seal up the door so i have multiple sensors here that will record the temperature we're at as it dips down colder and colder during the night you can see just how warm my body heat alone is able to get the inside of this igloo versus the outside i generally like it cold when i sleep i will not be surprised if i sleep really well out here so it's about uh, 1 a.m i'm all tucked in my biggest regret so far is not smoothing out the snow. It's pretty lumpy, but it's already 27 degrees. I believe it's 18 degrees outside, so it's already proving to be a bit warmer. I'm tuckered out, so I call it a night and see how well this goes. All right, it is now 7 a.m. and uh, actually got a pretty decent night's rest. Inside the igloo, looks like it's about 25 degrees. I actually got a decent sleep. I think it worked out. All right, so it's uh, been a little bit warmer than expected. The structure's not handling it too well. So the southern wall has been collapsed twice now. But the northern side here that has been pretty much intact. The eastern wall is uh, buckling and about ready to go. So the flamethrower did create some soot that I think melted a little bit faster and created a little bit of weak point. I think it's gonna crumble any second. Did it making a workshop and while it was here, it was pretty nice to have. While still pretty cold, it offered a nice wind protection and to work on some things out here. But in the end, it's not quite as long lasting as I had hoped. And it appears that uh, spring has sprung a bit earlier than I expected. So what happens? All right, so after a few warm days, the walls thin down thinner and thinner, especially right in the middle, and uh, eventually collapsed here. It held up pretty well against the flamethrower, but not so much against a slightly warm day. Very obviously, like anything that's more than white melts pretty quickly. So any, any little leaves and grass and dirt that got picked up just sped up the, the melting. But still took a few more days for it to actually fully collapse, which is a fair amount of weight with all the wood on the roof. So it's surprising just how structurally strong snow is. A little bit back out in the cold now, but it, it did end up serving its purpose. And I was able to use it as a, a pretty useful workspace. Just on its own, it was five to 10 degrees warmer. And that's not counting wind chill. So it made it actually fairly comfortable to work in there. Pretty nice for doing projects that uh, do have some fire potential with kilns and forges and stuff. And for obvious reasons, I'm a little paranoid about working with fire at the moment. It's nice to work in some place where I don't have to worry too much about catching fire because uh, it'd be very impressive to set fire to this. And the flamethrower proved it's not too flammable. Ice does appear to melt a lot slower than snow. So I'm gonna try and preserve that ice block, possibly cut a few more before the lakes fully melt and uh, see if we can save it through summer for a few projects. The igloo portion of it is actually still standing and I don't think it's melted too much. I see this lasting quite a while. It was a fun experiment to actually try and sleep in an igloo itself. Something I always wanted to do. I stayed pretty comfortable, but the actual temperature inside of it didn't really get as warm as I had hoped. Might have been an issue not having enough people in there, a little bit more body heat, might have warmed up a little bit better. My blankets might have insulated me a little too well. It was a fun experiment. I survived, kept me safe from the elements, and uh, got a pretty decent night's rest. It was kind of a fun project to explore snow and ice as building materials, something that's available for free. I'm hoping this will be kind of the first part of a series of exploring some primitive structures and building techniques used throughout history. I have a wide possibility of options for that, so I'll be really curious what people actually want to see. So if you have some specific structures you want us to do, leave a comment below. Until then, this guy did his job and uh, we can move on to rebuilding our workshop. Thanks again to all of our supporters on Patreon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.